Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar on the connection of TWI and CADA facilitated by Patrick Grau. He is a TWI master trainer and author. A few of his books are Shingo Research and Professional Publication Prize Recipients. It is also worth noting that Patrick will be making an appearance at the inaugural TWI Europe Summit in this upcoming November in Malmo, Sweden. I have just a couple quick notes before we begin. Due to our limited time, we will not be able to do a Q&A session. Also, this will be recorded if you want to refer back to it later. Patrick's presentation will be available for download. If you look at the right side of your screen and you click on the plus side next to the handout tab, you'll be able to find it there. So for now, let me turn things over to Patrick. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. So welcome everyone and uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, today our topic is going to be TWI and Kata. Um, you know, my background, as uh, many of you may know, um, focuses mainly on TWI, but really in the last uh, two or three years, you know, many, many, and by many I mean more than one or two, but several of our good colleagues and clients have been talking to me and recognizing our, um, the connection uh, between TWI and uh, um, uh, Toyota Kata. And I think it's ironic that, um, you know, these classic programs like uh, TWI or, for example, um, Toyota Kata, which is basically traditional patterns of um, leadership are, are, are helping us to challenge the traditional roles of, of supervisors that we traditionally have. So in other words, it's kind of like we're going back to the old new way of doing things and going back and recapturing some of that um, age-old wisdom, uh, as they say. So um, let's start our discussion then uh, here today by, by looking at that. Okay, here we go. So um, the traditional role, you know, of the supervisor, this should look familiar to you. Um, actually, this is top uh, line here is a, a quote from uh, Webster's Dictionary and says that supervision is the, the critical watching and directing of activities or courses of action. And, you know, that's kind of how I think we traditionally see the roles of supervisors. So in other words, our primary responsibility as supervisors is to make the numbers, to get the work done and get it out. Um, but based on that, you know, what we've seen over the last, uh, well, at least over half century since TWI made its debut back in World War II, you know, we see that uh, lots of things have come uh, to separate these managers or supervisors, you know, from the workforce. So we have specialists like HR and engineering and quality and legal and safety and so many specialist uh, functions have gone on so that the things that supervisors used to do, um, you know, like working, uh, solving people problems or helping people with, uh, um, you know, their their job methods and uh, um, in working with the workforce, you know, to do quality things. You know, those have been kind of stripped away, you know, from the supervisors so that now supervisors really act as just a buffer. Um, a pillow uh, between, uh, or a punching bag, sometimes people think of it, you know, between management uh, and, uh, and the workers. And so what uh, we see then is that, um, you know, supervisors tend to, to end up as firefighters uh, or they're just the boss, you know, that, uh, that watching and directing as uh, we talked about. Um, and uh, you know, what we really want is to go back to the point, the time when, you know, supervisors really participated with the workforce. And so, um, as we've learned about lean and have moved forward in lean, um, you know, lean has changed the nature of that work. And you know, here you see on the left-hand side uh, all of the the kinds of uh, things that characterize the mass production era. You know, that we knew uh, from the post-war. Um, uh, era, and you notice that uh, in the mass production um, uh, paradigm, you know, errors were kind of expected, and, and our job as supervisors then was to inspect uh, the work that was being done out there and weed those errors out or to fix them as we went along. Um, but uh, what we've learned uh, from lean production is very different. In the new uh, model, or the new old model as I like to say, um, what we want to do is build it right uh, the first time. Uh, and so this changes uh, the whole outlook 
of what management oversight really means. So I like that line down uh, towards the bottom. We're going from management oversight to management on site and viewing our people as a resource and not um, an expense. So it's really changing um, how we look at our roles as uh, leaders. And so if we sum that up, we can say that you know lean uh, supervisors need to um, skill in managing and communicating with people so that our production people can accept responsibility for work. They need to learn how to accept responsibility for improvement so that um, the production folks can participate in that improvement process. Uh, lean supervisors need to develop, learn to develop teams that involve their people so that um, frontline people um, can learn how to interact as part of a team. And they also need to learn how to delegate responsibility and to train others in order to um, uh, increase the level of job satisfaction in the production line. So in other words, supervisors really need to learn these new or, uh, as we've been saying, uh, these, these age-old habits, uh, these skills that uh, uh, lead us to do uh, better production. So if you look there at the quote down at the bottom by Peter Drucker, he said a long time ago, no organization can function well if its supervisor force uh, does not function. So how do we get our supervisors uh, to function? Um, and the answer is they need skills. We need to teach them skills. Um, so um, taking a look then, um, this is directly from the TWI program. So those of you who are familiar with TWI will recognize this. You know, what do we say? What is good law frontline supervision? And here's our definition from TWI. Good supervision gets the people in the department to do what the supervisor needs done, when it should be done, and the way the supervisor needs it done. And here's the hard part, because they want to do it. You know, so that what and that when is dictated by the customers. You know, as supervisors, we don't determine that. The customers do. The way is what we would call standardized work. And we'll talk a lot about that. Uh, we talk about a lot about that in TWI and Lean. And then finally, um, because they want to do it. That's the engagement part. That's how we engage our workers. And that takes a lot of skill, you know, on from the point of view of um, the frontline supervisors. So let's take a moment here. Um, Jacqueline, here's where you can throw up the uh, poll question. Um, just try the, this out. Uh, here's a question for all of you uh, listening as we start getting into our topic here uh, today. The um, question is, how well does your organization reach the goals that it professes uh, to challenge? Um, just kind of outlined a kind of a grid there where you can uh, um, um, Think about that uh, almost always to never, and then or somewhere uh, in between. And what about the results? You know, as your organization professes to move towards these challenges, are the results uh, coming up? Uh, are they kind of mixed, kind of a mixed bag, or maybe just hit or miss? You know, depending on where uh, um, or how that's done. So take a moment to uh, think about that, and um, that will kind of set us up uh, for this uh, continuing discussion. Okay, so Jacqueline, I'm not seeing any of those results. So if you get anything, just jump in and let me know. Okay, so why don't we move on? So um, we'll come back to that question. You'll see where that's leading us. So, well, let's do a quick review here of uh, TWI. I kind of don't know how many of you out there in the listening audience uh, are familiar with TWI. Um, but I'll just, uh, I don't have time, of course, today to go over all the many, many details of uh, TWI. But uh, just a quick overview and review for those of you who are not familiar. And of course, TWI always starts from this five needs model. Um, you know, as a supervisor, to be an effective supervisor, these are the five things you need. Um, and with that co common component there in the middle, which is safety. Um, so as supervisors, we need two kinds of knowledge. Of course, you have to have knowledge of your work and knowledge of your responsibilities. Um, that's, uh, you learn that locally, uh, in, depending on your industry or company. But uh, what's universal to all supervisory roles, whether it's in production or healthcare or service or construction, um, are these skills, skill in instructing, skill in improving methods, and then skill in leading. So what TWI was, uh, developed three, what T TWI did, uh, back when it was developed during World War II, was to develop um, three training programs around those three skills. So we have job instruction training, 
uh, job methods training, and then job relations training. So as you can see, um, each of those training programs um, addresses one of those skills. Um, so then let me just briefly talk to you about what those are. And I want to kind of show you something else uh, uh, here that I brought up um, uh, that I uh, uh, want to introduce you to what, how they look at these programs in Japan. Um, so for example, job instruction training is how to teach people to quickly learn to do their jobs correctly, safely, and conscientiously. And, and this program in Japan um, is called uh, Shigoto no Oshie Kata, um, which is the way to teach jobs. So I just want to point out that word um, kata to you. And actually, I, I, I remember when I worked in Japan back in the 80s, we were doing these programs uh, in Japan. And, um, but uh, recently, uh, just this year in April, I was actually um, in uh, Tokyo. And I visited uh, the Japan Industrial Training Association, which runs uh, the um, TWI programs over there. We were just sharing notes. And so I've got some literature. Um, so I, I was able to reconfirm those original names uh, in Japan, as you see here. Um, so um, uh, JI, job instruction, now, of course, I don't, we don't have time today. I could spend the whole day literally talking to you about all the details. But here's the four-step method uh, of job uh, um, instructions, um, JI method. It's uh, you know we're going to prepare the worker, getting in the right frame of mind to learn. And then in step two, we're going to present the operation, um, give them a demonstration, pointing out the important steps and key points and reasons for key points. And in step three, we're going to have them actually try it out, have them do it several times, make sure they can do the job, and also explain what it is that they're doing. And then in step four, we're going to follow up and make sure that they stick to the method and answer their questions and. Um, continue having them uh, uh, learn the job until they be become proficient at it. So the, uh, the key concept of job instruction is if the worker hasn't learned, the instructor hasn't taught. So that's job instruction. And then job relations, um, job relations is uh, uh, the people side of it, the leadership part of it. Um, training uh, supervisors, uh, you know, how to uh, take good actions that solve and, and more importantly, prevent problems with people. Now, here again, let me just point out to you the, the way that this was um, called originally in Japanese was hito no atsukai kata, um, the way to handle people. And again, you see that word kata. Um, we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, just want to point out to you how they looked at these, um, J, uh, these TWI programs. And um, so here's the four steps of job uh, relations. We're going to get the facts in particular because these are people problems. We're going to emphasize um, getting opinions and feelings. Uh, and then once we get the whole story, we're going to weigh and decide, uh, making sure that we look at many possible actions, uh, not just one way to solve the problems, but really a careful evaluation of many possible actions that get us to our objectives. And then step three is to take that action. You know, um, people problems are. Um, are never pleasant, uh, they're uh, not the most fun you're going to have in a day. It's very tempting to push them off to HR or to our boss and so on. Um, but uh, when we do that, we lose the respect of our people. So take action is step three. And then step four, check results. Did your action uh, help uh, production? You know, So oftentimes when we work on people problems, we shoot ourselves in the foot and uh, forget why we're coming to work every day, which is you know, to um, improve our production, our output of our services, and so on. So that's job relations. And then job methods um, is the Kaizen part of uh, TWI. It's a, a method of um, analyzing jobs to make the best use of the resources now available. Here again, I'll point out to you the name in Japanese. It was uh, Kaizen no Shikata, the way to do Kaizen. So there again, you see that word uh, kata. So that's been coming up. Um, uh, in our history of TWI. And here are the four steps of job methods. We're going to break down the jobs into its minute details, and then we're going to question each of those d details. And when we question the details, the answers to those questions are our ideas. So it's a method for being able to bring out ideas on a continuous basis. And then step three, once you get those ideas, you use those ideas to develop a new method You know where we're going to um, eliminate, combine, rearrange, or simplify the details into a new method. And of course, step four is to apply the method. Okay, so those are just a very quick lightning review of the, of the TWI methods. And I was trying to point out to you as we did that, uh, this word kata, because now let's uh, segue into 
how TWI fits in um, with what many of you are studying, um, Mike Rother's work and uh, his group on, on Toyota Kata. Um, actually, uh, just a, uh, the week before last, I, was, uh, I, I met up with my good uh, uh, friend and uh, uh, colleague, Art Smalley, and we were talking about uh, Toyota Kata and how that fits in with TWI. And, and Art reminded me um, um, of uh, some of the definitions uh, of how we look at uh, um, uh, TWI, which we just pointed out. Um, in Toyota Kata, uh, Mike uh, Rother points out how um, he uses the first definition of kata, if you see there on the screen, um, which um, there's one definition of kata which means uh, literally a form or a pattern, and it's typically used in uh, the martial arts areas, you know, when you perform a kata, you practice it, you master it um, uh, in order to, um, you know, do good uh, in your martial arts. Um, there's a similar form, another definition, which is number two, and that's the one I've been showing you with TWI. Um, kata also means how to do something. When you add that to the end of a verb, it changes it to the way of doing something. So you see that first example, uh, kanji no yomi kata. Kanji is the Chinese character. How do you read that uh, Chinese character? Or kanji no kaki kata. How do you write that Chinese character? And you can put um, kata on the back of just about any verb, I think. Uh, tabe kata means how do you eat it. Um, uh, yomi kata, how do you read it? Uh, asobi kata, how do you play that uh, uh, game or instrument? And so um, whenever you put kata on the back of something, it means the way of doing things. And so there again, you see the relationship of how we look at um, these TWI programs uh, in terms of um, the Toyota Kata. So let's um, uh, take a look here. This is uh, Mike Rother's work, uh, some of you are familiar with. Um, I'm not an expert at this, so um, my main purpose today is to kind of show you the relationship of TWI, but just if I could take a quick uh, review of what uh, uh, coaching kata and improvement kata are doing. Um, it's a methodology for developing people uh, to meet their challenges, or what we might commonly call as our problems, where we want to go um, with our work. And it begins with uh, um, uh, this relationship between the learner and the coach, um, where the learner, you know, is understanding the direction, what direction are we trying to move forward to, um, and then based on that direction of where our challenge is, grasping that current condition, and then establishing targets, um, next targets that, you know, um, uh, move us towards or iterate us towards that target condition. And all along the way, uh, the supervisor, the manager's role is to coach um, the learners in order to find the answers for themselves. Um, you know, you may remember John Shook uh, oftentimes talks about his uh, long-term mentor, uh, Fuji Ocho, who became chairman of Toyota. And one of the things that John always likes to point out is that uh, in all his years he worked with Mr. Cho, you know, people asked him many, many questions, but Mr. Cho never uh, answered the question. He always answered a question with another question. And so, again, the role of the supervisor, the role of the manager, is not to give the answers, but to coach people so that they can find those answers um, for themselves. And uh, another way of looking at this, uh, um, here's the model that Mike likes to put out. Um, uh, if you look at that improvement kata pattern, you know, we're going to start with our, well, start out with your challenge. In other words, what direction are we going in? And then, based on where we are in our current condition, we need to overcome these obstacles and then iterate towards that challenge so that we can get to our next target um, condition. Now let's take a look at how then TWI fits into that pattern. Um, now this, uh, I have to give credit to uh, my good friend uh, uh, Frank Garina and his uh, OpEx team at BE Aerospace. They showed this slide at the uh, Kata Summit uh, earlier this year uh, in Miami. And you can see how then we connect those two um, patterns. So when you run into obstacles, um, typically uh, you're going to find things, uh, for example, with stability. Is there variation in the work? Maybe a lack of standards or maybe no standardized work. Um, what about the productivity? You know, are we meeting our goals? Um, are there bottlenecks? You know, what's getting in the way of uh, our production? And then the environment, the human environment. How are the people getting along? Do we have good teamwork? And, um, and so on. And so when you run into obstacles in those categories, well, um, we have the three TWI skills. 
that can um, help us to um, um, overcome those obstacles so that we can move to our next uh, um, target uh, um, condition. Here's another way of looking at it um, in one of Mike's uh, Mike Rother's models. You know, as we try to go up that improvement level, there's a threshold of knowledge. You know, where you know as much as we know at this moment, we're trying to push back that threshold of knowledge in order to overcome those obstacles. And what we've seen is that, um, or what, like I said, many of um, my good colleagues are seeing is that um, the TWI skills allow us to push that threshold of knowledge back. In other words, by giving us real skills at analyzing jobs and analyzing problems, and then finding better ways uh, to do the work, finding better ways to teach uh, the jobs, um, finding ways to solve our people problems, you know, that those skills help us to push that threshold of knowledge back so that we can then tackle those obstacles and uh, um, overcome them and move in the direction we want to go to. Um, so, so that's kind of a, the idea. We're going to do a little exercise here, but first let's take a look at, at what, um, how we can compare, you know, the, the Kata and TWI practices. You know, what, um, uh, as I said, what most of many colleagues saw when they looked at the, the Toyota Kata, they, they said there were very many similarities to TWI. For example, there's a fixed pattern, a method, and we learn that fixed pattern through practice and repetition with the emphasis on being creating the daily habits. And um, uh, you'll remember uh, this scene from The Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. You know, the idea was that, you know, we learn the pattern first, uh, so then we create a habit of that, and then we can use that pattern as we get out and try to resolve our, our problems. Um, you remember from the movie, he didn't really understand why he was doing it, um, but once he was able to um, obtain the skills, then the rationale became very clear. And here's where, you know, we can say that if we're going to change our culture, you know, we really need to change um, our behavior. Another good colleague of mine, Skip Stewart at Baptist Memorial um, in uh, Memphis and in the tri-state area and that around Memphis, uh, they're working a lot on TWI. They're also learning Toyota Kata. And uh, what Skip likes to point out to his groups is this, just this quote here, it's easier to act your way into a new way of thinking than to think your way into a new way of acting. In other words, um, by practicing the behavior, you're, you'll be able to see a new way of thinking. You know, typically what we do is we, we bring people together and we try to convince them and give them a rationale for why they should be changing their behavior. And they may understand it and they think, yeah, that was a great uh, idea. I understand what you're saying. But that doesn't help us to change um, behavior. It's better to just start acting the new behavior and then um, see the new, um, gradually that behavior will let you see um, what you need to be um, the new, the new way, the new approach. Um, the Japanese have another way of saying that. They say knowing and doing are two different things. So let's take a look. Um, I just want to kind of walk you through a very simple pattern of what this might look like. Um, and uh, again, I apologize in advance. I'm not uh, um, one of uh, Mike's disciples. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to kind of abbreviate uh, this uh, uh, Toyota Kata um, uh, methodology. But uh, hopefully I've, I'll get it right. Um, but mainly, I'm not trying to teach Toyota Kata here. I just want to show how TWI fits into this pattern. But let's say we walk through an example um, of what this might look like. Um, in here, we let's say we're trying to increase productivity by 50% on the XYZ line. Um, that's our that's our challenge. Um, but our first obstacle is that um, we need to stabilize our daily output because the the current condition is that output fluctuates between 80 and 105%. And we've identified there could be many obstacles, but we've identified one obstacle. Um, that's preventing us from getting to that uh, target condition as, as process in station A is unstable. So if we move to the Toyota Kata pattern, we are uh, the coaching Kata, and we say, okay, let's coach, uh, we say, what's the target condition? Well, we want to stabilize our daily output. And the actual condition is, as we said, uh, fluctuates between 80 to 105 percent of our, our target goal. So what, um, this is the first round, so we're going to go straight through here. What obstacles are preventing us from getting the goal? Well, we've identified the process in station A is unstable. So the next question is, well, what's our next steps? 
and what do we expect from that and when can we come back and see the difference. So now we use uh, Mike's um, grid here of PDCA cycles. And so let's take a look at our first uh, PDCA cycle here. So we said that um, um, one of the actions we can take is to train, use JI then to train the operator on um, using uh, the correct method. And what we expect is that the operator will work steadily at the prescribed uh, tack time. And um, you know, JI is a great tool for helping us um, eliminate variation and create standard work. Now let's uh, fast forward then to the next uh, cycle, um, uh, the next coaching cycle, which is to reflect on that last step. And so we said, well, what did we plan as our last step? And that was, of course, using the JI. Um, and, and what did we expect? We expected to stabilize the performance. But what actually happened and what did we learn? So here we document that on the PDCA um, cycles chart. And actually uh, what happened was that the operator's work actually continued to be unstable even after we trained it on JI. And what we learned is that the problem is not necessarily the operator's skill, but maybe his, the operator's willingness to follow the standard. Okay. And so if we go back to our, our questioning, then what will we do next? Um, so the next iteration would be, well, let's use our JR skills. We'll praise the operator, solicit opinions, and we expect to get better cooperation. But um, it says, what do we? Ex uh, our goal is to get better cooperation. But what we expect is we kind of expect the, the um, operator uh, to complain about the company. They have complaints about the conditions. That's kind of what we're expecting. Um, so then we go back to our questions again. We're going to fast forward now to the next uh, cycle, and we say, you know, what's our target condition, and where are we going with this? And when we reflect back on our last step and what we expected to happen, we're going to look at what actually happened and what we learned. So let's, go, let's take a look at what that looks like in the next cycle, the third cycle. So we did the JR, and what we expected was complaints from the operator, but what actually the operator said was the operator pointed out how tiring it was uh, to handle the heavy tool uh, in a very confined workspace. And we, what we learned is that we shouldn't be so quick to question the operator's motives. Um, but, you know, Having that conversation with the operator helped us to bring out the true conditions. Okay, so now going back to the front side of the card, what's going to be our next step? Well, now that we've learned um, that the, the operator is struggling with the, um, uh, the uh, operation, um, we're going to use our JN skills then to analyze the job and find out if we can find a better procedure for using that heavy tool with the goal of reducing fatigue. And what we expect is that the operator will engage in, and help us in coming up with that new method. Okay, so again, we're going to fast forward uh, to the, the next iteration. So what was our last step? What did we expect? And what happened? And what did we learn? So let's just kind of fast forward to the fourth and fifth, kind of finish up this example. So um, after we did the JM, uh, what happened was uh, in that third uh, iteration there, we created a jig to hold the tool. We also rearranged the work sequence to reduce the holding time. And what we learned is that we found out um, there were more improvements up and above, you know, what we did with the, the target problem. And so what's our next uh, action? We're going to go back and use job instruction then uh, to train the new method that we found out with in order to maintain tack time. And what we expect is good cooperation from the operator because um, the operator actually helped us in the JM uh, to uh, learn the new method, uh, to develop the new method. And uh, then we go into that fifth PDCA cycle. What did we, what actually happened? We were able to maintain the good time. Uh, the productivity uh, for quite a number of hours. And what we learned is that problem solving is a combination of all the TWI skills. So you see how then um, using Kata as kind of a guide to guide us through, um, we were able to then uh, point out the proper use of the TWI uh, tools. And you can see how the tools synergize with each other um, in this example. You know, with job instruction, if the if the workers don't want to um, do a good job, they won't follow our instructions. Same thing with job methods. Um, when we create the new method, we have to use job instruction then to um, actually teach the methods. And the relationship between job methods and job improvement, you know, by having the operator work on their methods, we're able to build better job relations. And this looks like the scientific method, you know, where we do plan, do check and act, and you can see how well um, the, the methods integrate. In fact, TWI problem solving has a way of outlining that, you know, when we look at people problems, if it's because they don't know or can't do it, then we use JI. If it's because they don't care or won't do it, we use JR. And if it's mechanical issues or technical issues, then we use 
our job methods uh, uh, improvements. So um, when we put that all together, you can see how then TWI helps us to maintain that continuous improvement cycle with JI and JR helping us to stabilize the processes and then JM working to make continuous improvement. Okay, that brings me to the end of our half hour. I'm sorry we didn't have more time. Uh, there's so many more details I'd love to um, share with you, but maybe uh, if you join us, uh, uh, I know some of my colleagues uh, who I mentioned uh, in, the, in the webinar are going to be with us in Malmo, Sweden on November 17th and 18th. Uh, so if you can attend that, that would be great, or maybe have some of your colleagues on the European side attend us. But we'll continue this discussion as we move forward. So thank you again for your attention, and I appreciate your time today. All right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for facilitating our session today. I have just a couple notes before we let you go. Uh, hold on, let me bring up the PowerPoint I got for you. So the first thing I'd like to do is bring your attention to your screen is next week we will be hosting the Skill Point Workshops. This is a hands-on workshop. This simulator was originally developed on the Toyota production model and delivers a robust learning environment for integrating Lean and TWI. You can still register for this online. It's not too late, but space is limited. You will also notice I have another means for furthering your TWI and Kata skills. As Patrick discussed briefly, he will be speaking at the TWI Europe Summit in Malmo, Sweden on the 17th and 18th of November, if you're interested in hearing more on the subject of TWI and Kata. Also, we will be launching a new Lightwise webinar series for 2016, and we want you to be the first to know about it. So please visit www.lightwise.me and submit your name in order to find out what's coming up next. So to wrap things up for today, I want to remind you that this webinar is being recorded. You can look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. Feel free to share this throughout your organization. So again, thank you, Patrick, and thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye.